So welcome everybody. It's November the 16th, 2023. Welcome to um, working with the pineal gland today. It's the third session in the this, this series about um, healing the endocrine system. So we are still dealing with the, the three glands that's within our brain. And the pineal gland is the last one. I'm saving the best till last. So, so here we go. Um, before we go any further, though, I just want to take everybody into a short meditation, just a presence meditation to just just um, gather all our energies to focus on ourselves this evening. So just take a deep breath in through your nose, slowly and deeply. Breathe in. And let it all go. Breathe in again deeply through your nose. And let it all go. So one more time, breathe in through your nose deeply. And then let it all go. Continue to breathe in and out, following your own rhythm with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is still comfortable for your body. So honor your body. Take a few more deep breaths in and out. And each time as you breathe out, just allow your body to get even more relaxed. Wherever it is that you feel any tension in your body, just allow that tension to start to let go. When your body feels to be more relaxed than Focus on letting go of your thoughts as well. If thoughts should come in, then allow it to come in. Don't try to resist it. Allow it to come in without trying to engage it. And when your thoughts go out, then just let them leave. Put your focus on breathing as though you need all of your attention in order to make sure you breathe properly. Focus on your breathing. Let go of your thoughts. When you feel that your body and your thoughts have both calmed down, then you can shift your focus into your heart area with the intention of calling back all of your energies to you, all of your attention. Just call back all of your attention, focus, energy back into your own heart. Let go of anything that is outside of you. Be 
this very selfish in this moment. Just focus on yourself, especially in your heart space. Just you focus on your heart space. Feel that column of energy that is always going through the middle of your body. And feel that column of energy that is running inside your body. And start that start to feel that column of energy becoming more and more noticeable, strong, and coherent. Allow that column of energy to shift your body the way you hold your head, your shoulder, and the rest of your spine in a way that is most conducive for that energy to move through you. And when you feel the coherence that is within the middle of your body. And then you can come all the way back into the room and take a deep breath in. Let it all go. And come all the way back in. Open your eyes. Welcome back. So now let's talk about the pineal gland. <laughs> the thing is, there's really not much to talk about with the pineal gland. Why? Because there's so much about the pineal gland that we don't know. We've been studying our human body for a long time. And when I search online, what do we know about the, the pineal gland? Not much. It's um, it's very interesting. The only thing I can find is that the the pineal gland is um, some people call it the the third eye, um, and that it's responsible for the circadian rhythm within us, meaning our sleep cycles. So it's it secretes melatonin and um, depending on how I would say how 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 high functioning it may sometimes secrete DMT, which is a, a much more potent form of melatonin. So that's about it. That's about all that I can find. In terms of medical knowledge of what the pineal gland does, however, esoterically, the pineal gland does so much more. It is the, um, it is really how we interpret light. Light is everything is light, so we are light. Our body, like. Uh, yeah, we, we don't light up like a light bulb. However, if we use the right equipment to look at each of our cells, it actually emits a light. So we are actually light. And within light is information. And the pineal gland 
is is called the pineal gland because it, it shapes like a pine cone. The pineal gland is actually the, the part of our physical body that interprets light. So when your pineal gland is, um, I would say, activated, you will be able to sense, you'll be able to have information come in and you'll be able to know what that information is. So when you meet somebody, you would be able to hear their thoughts. You may be able to know what happened to them earlier on in the day, or even you may be able to find out what happened to them in the past life. And you may be able to find out what is um, the most probable future that is uh, that they're going to experience. So these are all functions of the pineal gland is actually to interpret information as coming from outside in terms of energy. So the pineal gland is, um, most of its function is really multidimensional. That's why when we are just studying something that is matter and physical, we don't think the pineal gland does much. But the pineal gland does so much more and we are just scratching the surface of that. Um, the pineal gland is actually the, the gland that we don't just interpret the energy coming in. We actually can send energy out as well. We communicate with the rest of the universe and we get communication from the rest of the universe all through a pineal gland. And um, one of the things they, they mentioned is that the pineal gland, when we are young, when we are, let's say four or five years old, is actually much bigger than when we are older. Because as we, like when we are, when we are born, the pineal gland is bigger because we are just new, brand new into this universe. And we need to be able to get all the information in so that we can, um, the, our soul can guide us to navigate this reality. But as we get older, we start shutting ourselves down for whatever reasons. And that's why our pineal gland would start to actually shrink as we get older. Um, unlike the rest of our body, which actually gets bigger as we get older. Meaning um, like when we're five years old, we are much shorter. We are um, like our head size may be smaller. And, and then we grow. The pineal gland though gets smaller and smaller because of this use. Because we, in, in this um, reality, a lot of the times we're not encouraged to use our pineal gland. So that's um, that. I have a question. Go ahead, uh, Madam Tonglia. Suppose it will help you sleep. And so in the past, in the past, uh, when I whatever time I have, occasionally I don't have those. Uh, uh, in so many, uh, what's that? Uh, I, I generally have very good just uh, go to sleep, but uh, occasionally I have problems. I will take one of those, um, uh, I don't know, is that a very bad uh, habit? Any uh, side effects? Uh, generally, they say. Oh, of course, normal in people will not consent the third eye or whatever they say. They, that one is good. Uh, of course, I have other friends. They cannot, the, this melatonin will not help them for their sleep problem. I don't, I don't really have severe problems with that, but occasionally, uh, 
I take that, it will help me. Uh, but uh, recently, several months, I stopped that because I'm not sure it's a, a good thing or not, <laughs> not a good thing. If I, I cannot sleep, I just uh, lie down there and uh, wait. And eventually, I will get sleep. <laughs> so my question is, Maratonia, yes or no? <laughs> um, OK. There is no easy answer to this. Because <laughs> it depends on the, the it depends on the quality of the melatonin, of course. Mm -hmm. So usually if it's if it's um a chemical, it's not as good for our body because well it's 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 artificial. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not as it's not as natural. On the other hand, if taking that can allow you to sleep better, then it actually gives your body a, a um, more chance to naturally heal itself because um, our body does a lot of work when we are asleep. The body actually renews um, ourselves. So it's not an easy thing. However, I just uh, one thing that you can always do is <clears throat> before you take something, before you actually decide to take something, is actually just hold that, whatever it is that you, you want to, to find out whether it's good for you or not. Just hold it in your hand. And um, I would, it depends on um, what you like. You, I usually would just um, put it either in my heart area or in my um, like stomach area. So either those areas is fine. And then just ask, just internally ask, is this going to be good for me? Is this for me? And just feel how your body feels. Usually if your body feels open, like have that openness, then that means, yeah, your body is okay with this. If you, if after you ask the question, you felt like shut down, then it's usually a no. And then um, you can ask the next question is, so this, like if you, if it's something that you have to take, for example, then you ask the next question. If your body says no, is I, and just communicate with your body as I, for, for whatever reason, I need to take this. Is there a way to shift the energy of this um, pill or food or whatever it is in order to have it um, support me then just ask that and then see what you what the the body's answer may be the body may be like absolutely no or it may you may feel like okay yeah it's fine you can you can take it if you if you really feel you need it something like that so i would suggest doing that thank you yeah for anything that you you're not sure of, um, and whether it's food or um medication, so can you repeat how you say is this a way to shift the energy of this medication? <laughs> See, for James already taught us how to do that. <laughs> Yeah, so so you just you just ask you just ask so for so for whatever reason reason like you like if you first you ask is this is this good for me and then you feel the answer is it a yes or a no and if it is a no and you really feel like I need this in order for me to be able to function let's say 
you need to see a client and you don't want and and you really don't want to feel headache or whatever it is then um and you say can can you shift the this um the energy of this pill or whatever it is that you need to take it because i really need to uh, function better and then just ask and um, have your body give you an answer and usually your body would say yes but then your body is um even if you you take that your body would know that okay this is for some other reason so your body would it's already um, ready to to minimize or neutralize the the bad habit, uh, whatever it is, the the toxins that may be is also there in there um, alongside with the, the the part of the medication that's going to help you. Can I say? Body, please minimize or neutralize the side effect of this medication. You can say anything to your body. It's your body. You communicate with your body. I asking for my sister. She now started new medica medi uh, medication. And her body doesn't take doesn't take it. She doesn't feel good. So I will tell her that tomorrow. He is the if one. She gonna, if she's gonna it. trust me. He's the one who has to do it though, because you can't talk to her body. <laughs> you yeah, have no yeah, say over her body. So yeah, so I'm gonna tell her this process. Who has to do it. Um, any more comments, questions before we move on? Okay, so what I would suggest if you want to, or like if you want to activate and expand your pineal gland um, beyond what it is capable now is to really come up with, like have a conversation with your pineal gland because um, everything is consciousness or I should say everything has consciousness. Even your car, your computer, like everything that is around you is it all has consciousness it may have very limited consciousness but it's it's still create it's still made up of material that has consciousness especially when it is part of your own body so your pineal gland it has a consciousness so communicate with that consciousness and um let your pineal gland know that Okay, in the past, you haven't quite used it to its fullest potential. and But now you are open to start to um, explore and have more and better use of the power of your pineal gland, um, if that's what you want to do. Because as I mentioned, your pineal gland is really... And is to interpret energy. So um, there are many, many levels of interpreting energies. Some people can just, I would say, look at something, look at the sky or look at a picture and would be able to get information from um, what's happening in the sky or from the, the, the state of the, the, the painter that, is, that has created that painting. So 
if that is what you want to develop, then you know, let your pineal gland know, okay, I am open to doing more. And then you give yourself exercise, little exercise. A very simple exercise, like, um, for example, when you sit, like, like even when, uh, especially when you go out, let's say in, in public transit, you want to be able to, um, okay, so I want to get more information about what's, what's the best time to travel. Or you can, um, so one of the things I do is, okay, I when I know that I, I need to get home fast, then I would send out the information. I want the, the, the bus to come at a certain time. And I want, um, so I order the transportation to, to come when I am my best guess. So if I say, okay, I'll, I'll be at the bus stop in 15 minutes. So half the bus comes right around that time for me, or maybe um, make sure I don't miss the bus, something like that. So you, you can do that. And uh, I think one of the things that Super James mentioned is that when he goes in to have meetings with people, he actually, before he shakes somebody's hand, he has that um, the the intention is to is to energetically tell the person is that listen to my proposal and then shake their head. <laughs> <laughs> so you may not say it out loud. However, you when you say it energetically and you actually mean it, then um, the universe responds. And the more you do it, the more potent it's going to be. So things that you can start to practice with your pineal gland. Should you be interested to do that? That's some of the way that you can um, start to activate your pineal gland to... Come, come back alive. And then the other ways is that is to really meditate. So when you meditate, um, so you meditate until you feel that column of energy in the middle of your head is whirling around. <clears throat> I don't know if you, you guys know what I'm talking about, but when I meditate, that's what I feel. There's a swirl of energy in the middle of my head. So that is really my body sensing that energy coming in. Um, that's, that energy is always there. It's just that I'm not aware of it most of the time. Because I may be too busy eating or you know, doing other things. But when I meditate, I I actually can sense that. And the more I pay attention to it, the, um, I would say the stronger that energy is. And that strong energy actually can start to shake up because when we don't use our pineal gland very much, and if we don't um, like eat food that is more clean, or drink water that is more purified, then um, it's possible for our pineal gland to be calcified, meaning that um, that there are, I would say, calcium crystal around the, the pineal gland, just very small calcium crystal around it that restrict the function of our pineal gland. However, when we start to activate the pineal gland, though, it will start to vibrate and it will know, okay, she is using us more. Yay, let's wake up and, and shake up and uh, get rid of those calcium um, crystals and be able to function better. So when you do something consciously, your body responds. 
I never, how much I meditate, how many times, I never feel that moving. How many hours you meditate before you feel that? <laughs> <clears throat> uh, okay so you may not like, everybody feels differently i'm i'm not saying that you know if you don't if it's not moving you're not doing it right that's not what i'm saying but but you know we should feel something so you have to find out your how your body respond to the energy you may feel it as a breeze like some is cool, or you may feel it as a heat. So just notice. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Go ahead. Well, a comment. I I feel my pineal gland is a pressure in the middle of my forehead. And I'm I'm wondering, is there something that we could do on a regular basis, periodically through the day, that will activate our pineal gland? That's that's sort of a simple exercise that will keep it sort of stimulated. I, I, uh, uh, suppose watch the sun in the early morning or evening when it's not very strong. I now I can watch that song at the daytime, at the lunchtime, no problem, Mike. But it uh, didn't help that much. I don't know why. When I watch that song, the, the first three seconds is very bright, then immediately it becomes purple. Yeah. And uh, uh, a lot of purple, but the inside it's a little bit bright. It's a circle, but I still I I I cannot feel. I cannot say really say anything. <laughs> I, <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, that's that's one thing that I teach you. Well, what? Um, it's uh, early in the morning when the sun gets, just uh, come up, and uh, late in the afternoon when when anyway uh, when uh, when the when it is not uh, so strong so bright it hurt you, so that's the time. Uh, uh, when I was uh, still in, at work. Early in the morning, I wait for the bus. I will just uh, stare at the sun. <laughs> but it helps a little bit. I did have some, uh, several occasions I saw something, uh, but uh, it's not stable. And, then, uh, and now I gave up. Mm -hmm. to do that. <laughs> oh, and also, I have, a, I have a question. What is wanting and your intention? Uh, Cornelius always say, oh, wanting is limited. So I don't want. So I forgot it. I don't know. I got to confuse it totally. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't catch that last question. Sorry. Can you repeat it again, June? Uh, the difference of wanting, you're wanting something and your intention, you set up your intention. So uh, what is, at what extent is wanting, not your intention? Always uh, intentions, not wanting, because uh, they always say wanting is limited. So now I almost uh, forgot about the pioneer ground to say anything because they always say that it, it, it's limited. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so. Okay. 
Good. So let me uh, just answer Charlotte first. Um, what you can do with the the pineal gland. There are two methods, and strangely enough, they are completely the opposite. First one, as uh, as June mentioned, yeah, you can. I wouldn't say sun gazing. I, I wouldn't suggest that. I actually, you can actually activate your pineal gland even if you don't open your eyes because your your pores, especially um, your forehead, there are pores that allows the light to go in. So you don't actually have to open your eyes. So just, I, I do that uh, a lot of the times is, you know, usually uh, I, when it's really sunny, I would go out, like if I know that the, the bus is going to come in in another 15 minutes, I would go out 15 minutes early and just, you know, have my, I close my eyes, but have my um, head facing the, the sun. So, and I would have the intention that, yes, I, I want the, the, the sun to be able to come in and want to receive whatever information that my um that i can get from the within my pineal gland so i i hold that intention okay that's that's one way and the other way is actually make sure that um there are at least a portion of time that you are in complete darkness so um, there's a practice of actually being in a dark room, a completely dark room. I I forgot how long you have to be in there. Like if you really want to activate your, your pineal gland is to make sure that you're in a very dark room. So you can create that uh, if in your house, maybe in the uh, basement. You mm -hmm. can... Uh, um, block off any window that you have and just um, switch the lights off and just sit there for some time. Okay. So when you're in complete darkness, your pineal gland would start to open, start to get okay. activated. Uh, yeah, the, the one exercise is the Close your your lights, but uh, have uh, have uh, uh, some kind of uh, very small light, like uh, like uh, um, uh, about candle, small candle, candle, and uh, have some distance, proper distance, and you gaze that also help i did i did close my eyes i did saw a priest in the church i saw some people the war the um, light body the, the sub, yeah they last I only mean, last like 30 minutes uh, then it will disappear. So I don't know why. <laughs> Still trying. Yeah, there there are many different practices. Um, however, yeah, these two. Okay, thank you. Yeah, these two you can do. And um, oh, okay. Um, June, you, you're asking about want and <laughs> intention. Okay. So it's not about the word, it's about the vibration of the words. So whenever you say, I want something, the vibration is you don't have it. That's why you want it. So the vibration is actually lack. Um, however, it, when you let go of that, you know that you are already enough. You're already, like who you are is already enough. So 
if you want some, if you want uh, to experience something. So all you have to do is say, I am open to that experience. So, but you have no, um, the, I think the, uh, the thing is you have no um, expectation. So you just ask, you just, you just ask the universe. So I am open to that experience, but you don't expect it because when you expect it and you don't get it, then you get, um, you feel like, oh, I, I'm not good enough. That's why I didn't, I didn't get it, blah, blah, blah. So it kind of confuse. It, it actually um, lowers the, your um, vibration. Whereas if you just say, okay, if you want to have an experience, you open to that experience, announce it to the universe and then let it go. Don't try to focus on, am I going to get it today? Am I going to get it tomorrow? What time? When? Like, let go. You just place the order and just know that whenever it is ready, you get it. So it's... Yeah, that's it is about yes. the frequency. It's not about the wording. Mm -hmm. You can say intention all you want, but if you're, if behind the intention, I want it, it's still no good. Mm -hmm. So now I forgot it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Say yes or no. Give to me great. If not, that's okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the pineal gland. What can we do about the pineal gland? Let me just let me just clean off some water that I seem to have spilled. Okay, so what can we do about the pineal gland? Let's do something then. So you guys, any any other questions or comments before we actually start working with the pineal gland? No? Okay. No. I have one question. Okay. Um, Cornelius was saying that he uses the word activate a lot. Can we just tell our pineal gland activate? Okay. Um, you can use the word, yes. And then you have to give your body time. So calibrate. Do you understand what I mean by calibrate? Please explain. Okay, so meaning that, yes, you set the command, but then after you say it, you have to have some way to know whether it actually worked or not. So that's what I mean by calibrate. Okay. Um, so when I, when you, so that means you have to know what it feels like when you're pineal gland is activated. So do right. some meditation and really concentrate on activating your pineal gland first mm -hmm. so that your body knows what you want. So once your body understands you, then all you have to do is just say activate and your body will know, oh, this is what she wants. So it will do it. This is so helpful. Wow. So just saying activate doesn't mean that the switch is going to go. It's going to turn on. Yeah. Because you, your words, you're just training, you're communicating with your body. So you have to know what activate actually feels like first. So then you actually have to do some work. So the first time you have to say, you have to actually intentionally activate your own pineal gland and really feel 
whether you feel the swirling or you feel some heat, whatever it is that an act that that um, identifies to you what an activated pineal gland is supposed to be. Maybe it's because when you when you can um, feel um, like communications, let's say, when you can hear other people, um, um, I don't know, <laughs> whatever it is that you are looking for, what an activated pineal gland is, and then you make that communication with your body. Okay, this is what activated pineal gland Feels is. Like, this yeah. is what I want. Then yeah. when you say it, then your body knows what it is that you actually want. Okay. My scalp, <laughs> my crown pulsates when I meditate. Okay. That's, that's how mine is. I don't feel this world like uh, uh, Tatiana was saying. And um, Anyway. Okay, then you know. Right. Thank you. Welcome. I don't feel this also. It's Vini feels that. You will have other ways. I already mentioned. Like So when you yeah. actually do some meditation, so what is your way? It, it could be, it could be um, you would feel warm or some other sensation. Yeah, I do feel something. Yeah. So, so everybody is different. You just have to know what it means for you. Okay, any other questions, comments? No? Okay. 